What's up everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be showcasing the Max Shine or the Shine Master Rotary Polisher and as you can see right there we're polishing with poo today. Just kidding, we're not. We're actually burning paint and what I want to demo is with this rotary polisher how this is a very efficient, effective entry level rotary polisher. Uh, they also have the DAs and I have videos on that too but we're going to be doing a demo on how to burn paint. I know, no one actually shows it but everyone talks about how you need to be fearful of it and what I'm going to show you is with a accurate tool, not an angle grinder, you can actually have a lot of warning signs before you get to that burn paint and this is the aftermath of some burnt paint. So we're going to walk through the steps of what pads, what compounds, what polishes um, you should be leery of, careful of when you're doing this type of work. Best practices, how you can be efficient with a rotary polisher, especially when you're stepping up to something that's actually made for that. And then why this may be a really good entry level rotary polisher to help you step up your paint correction game. And then we're actually going to see what burnt paint looks like. So look forward to uh, that part of the video where I actually burn paint on purpose and show you what it looks for all for the hopes that you can learn and look at the warning signs and realize the warning signs before you actually burn paint on a customer's car and have to repaint a panel. So all that coming up in this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Hit the subscribe button so you can get first alerted for other videos just like this one. Here we go. Let's get into it. Before we get into actually burning the paint, which is going to be fun, let's talk about what we're going to use. So, uh, and again, this video is going to mainly be like the warning signs to look for or things when you want to be careful. So we're going to use a really aggressive extra heavy cut compound. So a really gritty one, this is not 110, but this is one of my favorites, M100. Uh, again, obviously they give you the scale. It is very, very aggressive. Now we're also going to be using a rotary polisher. So this is the Shine Master, formerly known as Max Shine. This is their rotary polisher, which is a very good entry level rotary polisher. What things I like about it, extremely lightweight, comes with a nice backing plate that is a little flimsy, but probably could be replaced easily. I really like the knob at the top. Vents on the side has a soft start and variable speed trigger, which is nice. So you can go look, you hear that soft start, right? It's not loud. So angle grinders, um, DeWalt angle grinders can tend to be pretty loud. This I think comes in at a little bit cheaper than that. Uh, it has a speed dial like a dual action. Uh, it doesn't have the RPM speed dial, so uh, you, you may be more comfortable with that when you can select like a four, five, or six, because a lot of people are used to a DA, you may like that more. Uh, but even when you're around it, you can still turn it down, see how it's the variable speed. So you could be on four and kind of tone it down and feather the trigger without adjusting the speed which is a really nice feature about that. So no reason to be nervous about a rotary. Um, I'm going to be using a medium foam pad. Uh, this one already is kind of primed with M100. Foam can heat up very quickly. You want to be a little bit more careful if you're going to use something like a wool pad. So. With that said, the area we're going to be burning is right here because uh, it has this kind of uh, flaw already and as we get closer uh, I will talk to you about what to look for. So again, a grittier compound, we'll put it on the panel. And there's really, the purpose of this video is there's no reason to be scared about burning paint when you actually see that it's it's easy, but it's actually not as easy as you think. So, but let's, one of the things I do want to try is how fast does it happen? So uh, I'll talk through it as we keep going. So I'm going to go all the way up to speed six on this. You see that soft start? And if you keep the machine moving, you have nothing to worry about. Things you do want to look out for, edges here 
and here, or when the body panel is moving like it is, or, or forms differently, you may be trying to buff this like valley right here, and you may think you're in the valley, but your other side of the pad is hitting a higher spot. So other areas this will happen on fenders, on, um, on bumpers, on body lines of the car. You think you're only polishing one side, but another section of your buffer is actually hitting a higher point of the car. So, okay. So if you keep it moving, a lot of people with a DA, on a DA will have a really slow arm speed like this. Really super slow. And the problem is with a rotary, you're, you're gonna heat up the paint because you have, basically think if you're rubbing something like this, even with your finger, you're starting to generate a lot of heat. Whereas if you did like an oblong shape like this, you're not, because you're not in a perfect circular motion, you're not heating up that area as much as possible. So with a DA, as long as you keep the machine moving, chances are you're not going to burn the paint unless, of course, you hit an edge. So let's start with, uh, we'll do, I'm trying to think of like five or 10 seconds would be better. Let's start with five seconds of the pad in the same spot. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. So at five seconds, it's starting to get warm to the touch, but it's not unbearable, right? And so again, yes, I could have a heat gun tell you exactly the temperature, what it is right here, but think about it. The rotation of the machine and the product with the abrasives in it are generating heat really, really, really fast. So I wanna give you warning signs, and again, this is this is about as hot as you want the panel to get. Obviously, through a video, it's a little hard to tell you how hot, but hot to the touch to where it's becoming uncomfortable for your hand, okay? So let's do, let's do 10 seconds in the same spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. At 10 seconds, it's like really, really hot. And let me bring you guys in. And again, we're doing the same spot, so I guess you could even see, you could say, you know, well, it's been 15 seconds, but you could start, you can see that there's actually, let me take you guys off of this. Where I'm buffing it is right in here. So if we get the light in there right, there's like a little blemish right above my finger, right around there we're starting to get little blemishes and it's really warm to the touch. If you stay away from this, where it's too warm, where you can't keep your hand there, if you don't go any warmer than that, you're fine. But you could see, we're at a, you know, 15 seconds of holding the polisher in one spot and we're still good. Very hot to the touch, still good, haven't started smelling anything. When you start smelling something, you're in big, big trouble. I loaded up my pad again. Let's go 30 seconds. And I'll, I guess I'll just watch the time on the camera here. Let's go, yeah, let's go 30 seconds on this now. And what you wanna look for is do you start smelling anything? Does the, is the buffer taking off? What is happening? and you need to start paying attention. So I think, again, obviously you wouldn't want to do this. We got about 10 more seconds. I'm at medium pressure. And I'm starting to smell a breakdown of the product and the smell changed in the air. So let's see, we're at 30 seconds. And still, can you smell it? I can see it. You can start to see it. It's getting So it's, it's getting hot, but, Okay, per this is perfect. So the smell was actually the tape. It's extremely hot. You can't even keep your hand there at all. It's way too hot. So we're already way hotter than you would ever wanna do it and you can't keep your hand there. And then I will start to see, this is perfect. I'll bring you in and you could start to see where we're beginning to burn paint. So again, the light is your guide. You can see this ring that is starting to form right around there, the outer ring. That is not compound residue. That is where the paint is starting to burn, but you can even see in the center of the pad, it's looking really good still, right? So again, we've been in the same area for a really long time, 
and still haven't burned the paint. So there's actually a lot more give than people want to talk about. A lot more give. Back to it. Panel, and again, a wool pad or something, a wool pad like this, I wouldn't recommend a, a microfiber pad, is going to heat up the paint more than this foam. So let's go, let's go a minute in the same spot and then see what happens. And you can see the, the noise on this rotary is not loud. I can still talk over it. It'll bog down a little bit if you apply too much pressure. But again, you don't want to apply too much pressure with a rotary. And that's, that's another cool thing about this machine is that it's very forgiving for a rotary. So you see it start to stutter right there? Oh, now you can hear it. We burned the paint, so you can hear it. We have started to burn it. Now you can really smell it. Less than a minute. It's way too hot, but that's a great. I think that's not good for you. It's not good, right? Probably not good to do the sniffy sniff with this either. But again, you can see how one forgiving this rotary is. And two, let's keep going. Let's see how long it takes now. So I'm gonna dig in with an edge to show you guys. But we're, we're smoking. <laughs> so we're even starting to smoke before we actually burn through to metal. So the paint is right about to go. You're getting smoke signs. It's telling you, don't do it. We're too hot. Move along. A lot of smoke coming. Should be getting through there anytime. A lot of smoke starting to happen. Pad breaking down. And I don't even want to touch it because it's going to be so hot. And this paint is great. Ow. So I still haven't been able to burn through it. Let's actually switch up. And again, this is good because look at how aggressive I've gone and I'm still not getting any burn. So let's switch it up now to a wool pad and see if we can get through there. But again, it's so hot to the panel, you would burn your finger touching it. Let's see what happens. So you can see actually how forgiving the car to be. You never want to do this this long, chasing a scratch or anything like that. And again, starting to get the smell again. The, you can tell the buffers. And I'm just looking to see where we're going to burn through. So the more product will help it stay a little bit lubricated, but it can, it can also See how it's really fighting me now because now we're starting to get through it, but we're a few minutes in here. There we go. We've started to smell that now. So let's go to more of a dry buff. Definitely fighting me more. So what I like about this buffer versus the DeWalt is that you can't, it's a rotary, you're going to be able to get all the benefits of a rotary without really messing it up. And that is the point. And so there's some burn marks starting to come through. We're starting to get some blistering on the panel. So let me show you, I'll bring you in again. There's that light. So right there, we're starting to get some blistering. The paint is starting to do some funky things. And again, another warning sign. So you could see with an entry level rotary polisher like this Max Shine, you're gonna have a ton of warning signs 
before you actually burn through the paint. So those are blisters, just like a sunburn. Essentially, the paint has a sunburn right now from all the heat. No different than being out at the beach too long. Huge warning signs. The problem is those are not correctable now. This would need to be repainted, so you've essentially started the process of burning the paint. Blisters in the paint. Again, this is, I'm really impressed. One, one area that you could look at as a downside to this machine is that it's not aggressive enough. However, I actually think the opposite. If you're looking to step up into a rotary, this is actually, I'm very impressed with this machine that it has so much wiggle room and give in there. With an angle grinder, you could jump that up to 3000 RPM. Basically, there's no ceiling and you could really just cut through paint right away. But as a, as a entry level rotary polisher, if you're looking to seriously shave some time off your paint correction game, but you're scared to step up to a rotary, an angle grinder, uh, maybe even a flex, you're not sure if you want to spend that much money, this is a very, very viable machine to buy to kind of get into the rotary game, start your your rotary polishing, and as you can see through this video, it's going to be very difficult to mess it up. Guys, I got this, I got this back tailgate at a junkyard, so the car had been sitting in a junkyard forever, you know? Let's see where we're at. Are we burning yet? Let's see. Ah, perfect. I was waiting for this. So I'll bring you in yet again, and I was waiting for this. Spot. As you can see, the compound's starting to dry on it, but still got the blisters going, and it's starting to go. Well, it's been starting to go for a really long time. But as you can see, I mean, I, it would be interesting to see how long I could sit here with it in one spot. I mean, this is really insane to... It's fighting me, it's starting to grab. Check it again, see if there's any difference. The blisters are starting to get really bad, some scratches in there. Ah, there it is, okay. This is exactly what I wanted to show too. Look at my pad. See how I have the blue compound, but now I finally have been able to get through it. You see the browning, and then I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but right here, it's a different color now. So there's a different color, there you go. I'm burning the paint right here. So sometimes this will happen sooner than later, but you have to look for it. Right there, you'll, get, you'll start to get a decolorization. I don't think that's a word. It'll start to change color on you. You gotta be very, very careful of that. We can kind of hammer down on that side of things and really burn through it. I'm gonna hold down the lock trigger. Seems like applying some pressure. So I'm applying pretty heavy pressure right now. Definitely getting the smell. The smell you're getting is, is that it's really obvious something is starting to burn. So now I'm getting a poop smell. Like someone took a serious poop. Wait, there we go. We got a big burn coming. Really big burn coming. So the smell is becoming really bad. Probably not good that we're smelling this. But the smell, if you don't stop by now, can you smell it over there? It's getting nasty. All right, I'm gonna cut it there. Oh. So look at, not only does it smell like poo, your pad looks like poo. 
and it looks like you got poo on there. So I'm gonna stop it there. Let me get a little detail spray because that's, oh gosh. Because if you don't stop then, <laughs> look at that. There's so much heat work there that, uh, that it's actually, so right in that spot, you can see it's yellow and there's so much heat that's been generated right there that it's actually <laughs> trying to cool it down before I even touch it because there's been so much heat and the paint is now burned in that area. So though we haven't made it through all the way through the metal, the burn mark is really, really bad. Let me show you. Super forgiving, but you can see how, just how bad that is. So there's the burn mark, the discolorization, the bad smell, the blistering of the paint, a lot of warning signs that you can look for, but the overarching theme is like, you actually have a lot more give than people think, especially if you're using an entry level rotary polisher, something that's designed to not mess up the paint. All right, so what did you guys think? Were you happy? Were you happy? Were you, did you learn from this video? Did you get a lot of value out of it? Do you think this is a good entry level rotary polisher machine to help kind of cut down the time on uh, paint correction without having to go to an angle grinder or DeWalt, something that can go up to thousands of RPMs? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hopefully you'll hit the red subscribe button and I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching, see ya.